What is up guys, today I want to talk to you, yes you, about stylized stone. Why stone? Good question. In my last two videos, we learned how to sculpt and texture stylized wood, but if you want to make that big beautiful dungeon you always dreamed of, you're going to need something else. Popple! Oh no! Oh no! Ah! Oh yeah! And to make walls, we need stone, so let's go learn how to make some stone. In this tutorial, I'm going to go over how I sculpted this piece. You can apply these tips to your own mesh, or if you would like, you can grab my project files on Gumroad. It has everything you need to follow along with this video. And you will also get early access to my Substance Painter file for my next video with the finished textures and also a smart material to use in your other projects. Starting with our block out imported to ZBrush, I'm going to use the Auto Groups feature under the Poly Groups tab on the right. Bringing up our Poly Group view with the shortcut keys Shift F, we can see our groups. And now using the select tool with control shift left click to isolate a brick and then control shift left click drag on an empty space to invert that selection. Let's select the rest of the bricks now and go to our subtool menu split and then split hidden. Let's subdivide our bricks a few times to get nice smooth edges. And now our poly groups are set up. We can use the groups feature in the Dynamesh tab. This will avoid any of the pieces gluing together. And I'm going to start with Dynameshing at a resolution of 1024. My first brush will be the Trim Dynamic. I have enabled Lazy Mass in the Stroke menu for a nice smooth stroke. And I'm setting the brush size to 18. But yours will depend on the look you are aiming for. A smaller brush size will give the appearance of neatly constructed stones with little damage. And larger brush sizes will result in a more rugged worn final look. I'm going to now go over all the sharp edges of each stone but for the sake of time and because no one will see it I'm going to ignore the back faces of this model. So now our hand is cramped from making all those lines and we have all our edges beveled. I'm going to move on to my next brush, the H polish. Let's change the alpha to square alpha and now choosing some corners, we can start adding in some irregularities to break things up a bit. Things are starting to look a bit more interesting, but all those straight lines on the edges from beveling are starting to annoy me. So using the same H polish brush, let's start going over parts of those edges to break up that straight line and vary the width. This can take a little practice to get the look you want as things can quickly start to become too noisy. So try to keep the brush size fairly large and carve some areas a little further into the flat face area of the brick. Now that we have gone over all the edges again, let's load up our next brush. I'm going to be using some of the brushes from the Orbs brush pack, which I will link in the description. First, I'm using the Orb Rock Detail, bringing the intensity down to 8, turning on back face masking in the brush menu. And now we can just add in some surface detail by left click and dragging over our stone sculpts. Let's make some cracks in some of the stones, loading up the Orbs Cracks brush and turning on Lazy Mouse with a radius of around 30. I'm also bringing the intensity up to 25 or so and then isolate some of those bricks and add those cracks in. It's important to vary the pen pressure when sculpting cracks, this way you'll get a nice variation in line width and depth and also when changing direction try to keep it a nice sharp angle. Grabbing the Orbs Slash 01 brush now, I'm using it on the cracks to widen the areas that transition over corners or edges.
And now I'm gonna grab the clay tubes constant brush and adding in some small dents and also some small bumps. I like to group small details like these in twos or threes sometimes. So I will add a large dent and then one or two smaller dents in next to this to make small clusters of detail. Let's quickly go over the metal chain since we can duplicate it across later. I'm isolating and splitting one side into its own subtool and then dynameshing this subtool with the groups feature turned on. Now it's just a simple task of going over all the edges with the trim dynamic and then carving some of those corners with the hitch polish brush. Lastly, let's add some small scratches in using the orbs slash curve brush. And finally, let's finish the sculpt by subdividing the candles to get a nice smooth cylinder, dynameshing. And now using the standard clay and smooth brushes to give the tops a melted wax look. And then finally adding in some drips along the sides with the tops curved down. And there you go, the sculpt is all finished. You are now a master digital mason. If you liked the video, consider subscribing to my humble channel. It would rock my world and I won't take it for granted. And also keep an eye out for my next video, which will be out soon. Or if you are from the future, it should already be released. And in that one, I will go over texturing this piece in Substance Painter. With that said, I will see you in the next one.